Criselda Blanco Restrepo While you are familiar with the Godfather, get ready to delve into the life of the godmother of cocaine, Criselda Blanco Restrepo. Blanco is known for revolutionizing the cocaine trade, establishing intricate smuggling networks, and accumulating immense wealth through illicit means. If she owed you money but didn't feel like paying, well, you better forget about your money. Her ruthlessness and willingness to eliminate anyone in her way earned her a fearsome reputation in the criminal underworld. Picture a woman dominating the male-driven world of drugs and violence, reigning as the top cocaine importer of her time and authorizing the demise of countless individuals, including her partners. She amassed a fortune, living a life of luxury and excess that commanded respect even from Escobar. She is dubbed the godmother of cocaine, the queen of narco-trafficking, and the black widow. But who was this enigmatic figure? How did she climb from a disadvantaged Colombian childhood to become a Miami billionaire? What tactics allowed her to evade law enforcement for so long, and what eventually led to her downfall? What was her vicious life like behind the scenes as she juggled numerous lovers, opponents, and family members? Join us as we unveil the shocking truths behind Griselda Blanco Restrepo's rise and fall. From humble origins to reigning as the most formidable female drug lord in history, we'll uncover the secrets of her empire, alliances, adversaries, and ultimate fate. Are you prepared to journey into the dark and captivating realm of the godmother of cocaine? Then buckle up because this is going to be an unforgettable ride. In the steamy heart of Colombia, where the Caribbean waves whispered secrets to the palm trees, a legend was born on a fateful day, February 15, 1943. Her name, Griselda Blanco Restrepo. But this wasn't your ordinary legend, it was a story of blood, ambition, and danger. Her childhood was characterized by upheaval as Colombia was consumed by the flames of La Violencia, a period of brutal violence and chaos. Georgi Eliezer Gaten's assassination ignited chaos. By the time La Violencia ended a decade later, 200,000 or more people had been slaughtered. Griselda watched the screams, gunshots, a nation tearing itself apart. She learned early that power meant survival, and she vowed to hoard it like a treasure. When she was just three years old, she and her mother, Anna Restrepo, moved south to Medellin to seek refuge from the turmoil gripping their homeland. But young Griselda found herself immersed in the city's criminal underbelly instead of finding sanctuary. Medellin, a city on the edge of despair, welcomed Griselda. Poverty and corruption danced their wicked tango. At 11, she kidnapped a child from an upscale neighborhood, a pawn in her survival game. The child's cries echoed, but Griselda's heart remained ice. Barely a teenager, Griselda had already tasted the thrill of power and control that came with a life of crime. As she grew older, her criminal empire grew, propelled by her insatiable desire for wealth and dominance. By the time she reached her 20s, Griselda was a seasoned pickpocket, easily navigating the treacherous alleys of Medellin. She fled her home at the age of 19 with a bruised body and soul to avoid the sexual abuse she was subjected to from her mother's boyfriend, and she lived on theft in the city center until the age of 20. Griselda Blanco's journey was just beginning, from petty theft to organized crime. Little did anyone know, she would soon rise to become the queenpin of one of the most infamous drug cartels the world had ever seen. But that's a story for another time. Back in 1960, Griselda stood beside her husband, Carlos Trujillo. Together, they ignited a clandestine flame, their marijuana empire. The streets whispered their names, and the law trembled. Their operation thrived in the shadows, laying the foundation for Griselda's future reign of terror. But as the flames of their enterprise burned brightly, their marriage crumbled under the weight of betrayal and suspicion. Rumors swirled of Griselda's involvement in her ex-husband's demise, whispers of a ruthless queenpin emerging from the ashes of a broken union. She wore her widow's veil as a crown, and her heart turned stone. 
Undeterred by the whispers of her past, she illegally entered the United States in 1964 using fake documentation and settled in Queens, New York. She was ready to carve out her empire from the concrete jungle of Queens. With her three children in tow and her second husband, Alberto Bravo, by her side, Griselda wasted no time making her mark on the American underworld. Bravo was a cocaine smuggler associated with the infamous Medellin cartel. He opened doors to unimaginable wealth and power, but also brought with it the ever-looming specter of danger. The disco rumble of the 1970s flashed a growing demand for illicit drugs like cocaine. By the middle of the decade, Colombia had emerged as the center of the cocaine trade, which brought opportunities for staggering wealth and danger. And at the center of it all stood Griselda Blanco, a formidable force to be reckoned with in the shadowy corridors of the cocaine trade. Together, they formed a formidable duo, making the streets whisper tales of blood and betrayal. Together, they orchestrated the intricate dance of cocaine, moving it from the heart of Colombia to the bustling streets of Miami and New York. She was the architect of a cocaine empire that stretched from the Andes to the neon-lit boulevards of Miami. The streets buzzed with whispers. La Madrina, the godmother, had woven her web, and none could escape its silken strands. As their empire expanded, this created cracks in their relationship. Blanco and Bravo's once unbreakable bond frayed due to jealousy and betrayal. Griselda hungered for more, more wealth, more control. Alberto, once her confidant, became her rival. And in a twist of fate shrouded in mystery, Bravo met his demise in 1975. The details of his death remain shrouded in secrecy, but one thing is sure. Griselda Blanco's name became synonymous with the deadly elder of the Black Widow. Rumors swirled over her hand in Bravo's demise, with whispers of a gunshot echoing through the night. Her husbands, those who had dared to stand beside her, were gone, consumed by her insatiable hunger. In the murky underworld of the drug trade, Griselda Blanco wasn't just a player. She was a queenpin, a mastermind whose influence stretched from the streets of Colombia to the bustling cities of North America. With a keen eye for opportunity and a fearless determination, Blanco carved out the smuggling routes that would later become the lifeline of the infamous Medellin cartel. Her empire knew no bounds. From the sweltering jungles of Colombia to the glittering shores of Miami and the concrete jungles of New York and California. Under her leadership, the Medellin cartel became a force to be reckoned with, feared by law enforcement and rival gangs alike. With Blanco at the helm, the cartel's ambition was unrestrained and they would cross no boundary in pursuit of profit and power. But as the cartel's influence grew, so did the forces arrayed against them. The shadows grew darker, and the dangers became more imminent. And in the heart of the drug trade, Griselda Blanco stood as a beacon of ruthless ambition, a woman who would stop at nothing to conquer the world of crime. She implemented ruthless tactics to eliminate competitors and solidify the cartel's control over production distribution, and transportation networks. Her operations were not limited to one region. Her reach spanned across the United States, making her a formidable force in the drug underworld. The immense profits generated by her network solidified her position as a significant player in the illicit drug trade. Blanco was known for her violent and cruel criminal behavior. She shattered gender barriers in the male-dominated drug trade. Her violent reign and involvement in drug wars captivated the public imagination and continued to be a subject of fascination in popular culture. Blanco's cocaine realm earned her the nickname The Godmother, Colombia's response to The Godfather's Vito Corleone. Blanco seemed to lean into the mythology. After she gave birth to her fourth and final child in 1978, she called him Michael Corleone in honor of the film's main character. Blanco's empire was built and sustained on violence, making it the driving force behind her network. This violence turned Miami into a battleground during the drug wars. One of the most public attacks happened on July 11, 1979. Two men, likely at Blanco's bidding, 
were gunned down and served as the lifeblood that kept her operations running smoothly. In this notable incident, two men, believed to be acting under Blanco's orders, fatally shot a cocaine dealer and his bodyguard in a liquor store located at Miami's Dadlin Mall. In another incident in Miami, Blanco ordered the murder of Jesus Castro, her associate, who had allegedly harmed one of her children. However, in 1982, when her hitmen attempted to carry out the task, they tragically killed Castro's two-year-old son, Johnny, instead due to a terrible mistake. Griselda Blanco's reign in the Medellin cartel was fraught with internal power struggles and deadly rivalries. One of her most infamous feuds was with fellow cartel leader Pablo Escobar and the Ocoa brothers, George Lewis, Juan David, and Fabio. Blanco's ruthless ambition and uncompromising leadership style clashed with Escobar's growing influence within the cartel. Netflix's biographical series Griselda begins with a quote allegedly from Pablo Escobar. The only man I was ever afraid of was a woman named Griselda Blanco. Moreover, Escobar's brother Roberto Escobar wrote in his book, The Accountant's Story. Inside the violent world of the Medellin cartel, there was no such thing then as a drug cartel. Some people were bigger in the business. One of the most prosperous and brutal was a lady from Medellin that everybody knew about named Griselda Blanco. On the other hand, the Ocoa brothers, influential figures in their own right, aligned themselves with Escobar, further intensifying the rivalry between Blanco and her adversaries. Griselda had a tumultuous relationship with the Ocoa brothers. While they were part of the same cartel, tensions arose due to power struggles, territorial disputes, and conflicting interests. Griselda's ruthlessness clashed with their ambitions, leading to intense rivalries. At the same time, the Miami Drug War took place, which is also known as the Cocaine Cowboy Wars. It was a brutal conflict that engulfed the streets of Miami during the 1970s and 1980s. You see, Griselda Blanco played a significant role in fueling the violence and chaos that characterized the Miami Drug War. Her operations intersected with those of Escobar, the Ocoa brothers, and other rival factions. She was said to have devised a method for ordering mass killings, many of which were carried out by gunmen riding motorcycles. Blanco's ruthlessness and willingness to eliminate anyone who stood in her way contributed to the escalating bloodshed and carnage on the streets of Miami. The city became a battleground as rival factions fought for dominance, leading to a surge in drug-related violence, including drive-by shootings, bombings, and assassinations. Law enforcement agencies struggled to contain the spiraling violence, and the Miami Drug War became a symbol of the devastating impact of the cocaine trade on American society. In addition, a number of the slayings happened in broad sunlight, including a shootout at a local mall in 1979. With his combination of brutality and astuteness, Blanco rose to prominence as one of the wealthiest drug dealers globally. According to reports, she smuggled three or more tons of cocaine into the United States annually, netting some $80 million per month. Blanco's children personally witnessed her acts of violence. In 1983, it was believed that she may have been responsible for the death of her third husband, Dario Sepulveda. This tragic event occurred in Colombia, with their five-year-old son, Michael Corleone, present. In total, authorities suspected Blanco's connection to at least 40 murders throughout the United States. Blanco evaded the law for a while, staying a step ahead. However, the United States Drug Enforcement Administration collaborated with informants to locate her and construct a case. In 1984, Griselda Blanco relocated to California, fearing for her life due to escalating threats from rivals. However, the story took a turn, and her refuge was short-lived as she was arrested when the relentless pursuit of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency DEA led to her apprehension at her opulent residence in Irvine, California, in the following year. The ensuing trial captured the nation's attention as she was extradited to New York to face drug charges dating back to 1975. In 1985, 
Blanco was convicted and received the maximum sentence of 15 years, yet rumors persisted that she maintained control of her criminal empire from behind bars. Blanco's arrest was the culmination of years of covered investigations and international cooperation, underscoring the gravity of her criminal enterprise. While incarcerated, authorities sought to bring further charges against Blanco, linking her to over 200 murders. Despite the gravity of the accusations against her, Blanco's wealth and influence allowed her to manipulate the legal system, resulting in her eventual acquittal due to a lack of evidence. Blanco's legal troubles did not end there. In 1988, she was indicted in the United States on federal drug trafficking charges as part of a sweeping crackdown on the Medellin cartel. In 1994, a turning point emerged when one of her associates, George Ayala, agreed to testify against her. Ayala's testimony implicated Blanco in three murders, including the tragic killing of a former enforcer's two-year-old son during a botched assassination attempt. According to George Ayala, Blanco was pleased with the mistake. Initially, she was outraged because we neglected the father. However, when she learned that we had accidentally taken out the son, she expressed her satisfaction, claiming that things were now equal. The prosecution sought the death penalty, but Ayala's reputation suffered after it was discovered that she had mispaved toward members of the prosecution team. In Florida, Blanco was also charged with multiple murders. Ultimately, in 1998, she pleaded guilty to three counts of second-degree murder. The court sentenced her to 20 years in prison for these charges. During her time in prison, she cooperated with authorities, which resulted in a reduced sentence. After serving a part of her punishment, Griselda Blanco was discharged from prison in 2004 due to health problems. She was deported back to Colombia, her home country. Following her return to Colombia, Griselda lived a relatively quiet life away from the spotlight. Despite her notorious past in the drug trade, she kept a low profile and avoided public attention. Griselda Blanco, accompanied by her pregnant daughter-in-law, went to the Cardoso Butcher Shop on 29th Street on September 3, 2012. Upon exiting the shop, an assassin riding a motorcycle approached and shot her twice, resulting in her immediate death. She was 69 years old at the time. Her relative, the pregnant daughter-in-law, was unarmed. How Blanco was assassinated mirrored the tactic she had popularized during the Miami drug war, a drive-by shooting executed from a motorcycle, which had become synonymous with her leadership in the drug cartel. Without warning, the gunman shot her twice at close range. The irony of her becoming a victim of the very method she had championed adds a layer of complexity to her demise. Two days later, her body was placed in a casket adorned with beautiful golden arabesque designs. She was laid to rest in Jardines de Montesacro Cemetery the same burial ground where Pablo Escobar rests. Two buses filled with local kids from Antioquia, the suburb where Griselda worked as a prostitute and drug dealer and gained notoriety as a husband killer, but also where she generously distributed gifts to underprivileged children during Christmas and came to pay their respects. Griselda became one of those infamous legends that emerged from Colombia's dark and shameful past. Following the assassination of Griselda Blanco Restrepo on September 3, 2012, law enforcement launched an investigation to apprehend her killer. The investigation led to the arrest of a suspect, who was subsequently charged with her murder. During the trial proceedings, evidence was presented linking the accused to the crime, including eyewitness testimonies and forensic analysis. The prosecution argued that the defendant had acted as the assailant in the motorcycle shooting that resulted in Blanco's death. Ultimately, the accused was found guilty of the murder of Griselda Blanco Restrepo. The verdict brought a sense of closure to the case, although it did not erase the complexity surrounding Blanco's life and criminal legacy. If we talk about her love life, her most notable marriage was to Alberto Bravo, with whom she worked closely in the drug trade. But things didn't work out between them, and Bravo was eventually killed, supposedly by Blanco. She later married Dario Sepulveda, 
with whom she had one of her sons. Griselda Blanco had several children, though the exact number is disputed. Among her known children is Michael Corleone Blanco, who has gained fame through his television and social media appearances. The three children, all with the surname Trujillo, were always involved in the family business. As a result, they became targets for Griselda's enemies, who sought revenge while she was in prison. This is why Dario Sepulveda, her third husband, was determined to keep his son Michael away from any criminal activity or association with the underworld. He simply wanted an everyday and peaceful life for himself. And yes, if his name sounds knowledgeable, he obtained it from the main character in the Godfather series. Blanco's involvement in the drug trade made her one of the wealthiest and most influential figures in the criminal underworld. However, her empire eventually crumbled, leading to her arrest and imprisonment. Following her incarceration, Blanco's sons, particularly Michael Corleone Blanco, have sought to distance themselves from her legacy and have stated that they aim to lead a legitimate life. He explained his reasoning for legal action, saying, I believe it is my responsibility to do so. If I didn't, I would not honor my commitment to my OG and mother. I am simply standing up for my family and doing so within the confines of the law. He also talked about her mother, saying, She did bad things, I know that, but she was my mother and I love her. Michael now runs a billionaire cartel lifestyle and apparel brand called Puro Blanco, about which he told Fox News and paid tribute to his mother. Griselda Blanco's peak net worth was estimated to be an astonishing $2 billion during her lifetime. She is widely regarded as one of the most prosperous drug dealers in history. At the time of her death, Blanco reportedly owned real estate properties worth approximately $500 million. She was able to make such purchases thanks to her thriving cocaine business, which was reportedly generating around $80 million per month for her. After Griselda's arrest, the Drug Enforcement Agency's Central Tactical Program reportedly seized a significant portion of her wealth. This included four properties worth a total of $118.7 million. The arresting agent, Robert Palumbo, said she has a substantial amount of money stored in various bank accounts that were never recovered. Notably, she owned an apartment valued at 550 million pesos, approximately $32.6 million. Griselda Blanco was a formidable force in the cocaine-based drug trade from the 1970s through the early 1980s. Her ruthlessness, cunning, and audacity allowed her to rise to prominence. Griselda Blanco Restrepo, often dubbed the Black Widow or the Queen of Cocaine, left an indelible mark on the drug trade with her ruthless tactics and unparalleled ambition. Her legacy is characterized by a legacy of violence, corruption, and unbridled ambition as she rose to become one of the most formidable figures in the history of narcotics trafficking. Her success in evading law enforcement for years and her willingness to resort to extreme measures to protect her empire solidified her reputation as a fearsome adversary. She played an essential part in founding the cocaine distribution network between Colombia and significant North American cities like Miami and New York. Blanco's impact extended beyond mere drug trafficking. She revolutionized smuggling techniques, including using corpses to hide cocaine, and her organization was responsible for countless deaths. Griselda Blanco's life story has captured the imagination of filmmakers, authors, and artists, resulting in numerous depictions in popular culture. From documentaries exploring her rise and fall to fictionalized portrayals in films and television series, Blanco's larger-than-life persona continues to fascinate audiences worldwide. One of the most notable portrayals of Blanco is in Netflix's Griselda series. Actress Sofia Vergara brought Griselda Blanco's story to life in the Netflix series named after her. Vergara's portrayal of Blanco earned widespread acclaim. While the show takes some artistic liberties, it remains a captivating exploration of Blanco's rise to power and the impact of her ruthless tactics on the drug trade. Other television series, like Narcos, chronicles the rise and fall of the Medellin cartel. While Blanco's character is not central to the storyline, 
Her influence on the drug trade is acknowledged, providing viewers with a glimpse into the tumultuous world of narcotics trafficking during her era. Additionally, Griselda Blanco's life and legacy have been extensively portrayed in various forms of media, including documentaries, series, films, and songs, with several upcoming projects continuing to explore her story. Notably, Blanco features prominently in the documentary film Cocaine Cowboys, 2006, and its sequel Cocaine Cowboys 2, 2008, shedding light on her involvement in the drug trade. Her influence extends to the realm of music, with Florida rapper Jackie O releasing a mixtape titled La Madrina, Griselda Blanco, in 2010. Rapper Lil' Kim also talked about Blanco in her warning freestyle in 2011 and again in the song Diego in 2016. American rapper West Side Gun also paid homage to Blanco by naming his record label Griselda Records in 2012. Blanco's influence transcends borders. Her character appears in Spanish-language telenovelas, such as La Viuda Negra, 2014, in which Ana Ceradilla portrays her. In literature, Blanco's name surfaces in Marlon James Booker prize-winning novel, A Brief History of Seven Killings, 2014. Blanco's impact on contemporary music is evident, with artists like Kanye West, Nicki, and Youngboy never broke again referencing her in their songs. The portrayal of Blanco's life continues in visual media, with Catherine Zeta-Jones portraying her in the television film Cocaine Godmother, 2018. Blanco's complex and controversial legacy persists in popular culture through these diverse portrayals. As we delve deeper into Griselda Blanco's complex life, we uncover a story that transcends mere notoriety and delves into the very essence of human existence. Blanco's journey is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the allure of power, from her humble beginnings in the streets of Colombia to her meteoric rise as one of the most influential figures in the drug trade. Imagine a woman who defied norms, climbed to power, and left chaos in her wake. However, power has a dark side, and tragedy, betrayal, and violence characterized Blanco's reign. Her life story is like a thrilling roller coaster ride that takes us from the streets of Colombia to the pinnacle of the drug trade. She was both feared and admired, earning nicknames like the Black Widow and La Madrina. But beneath it all, there's a universal lesson. Ambition can lead to greatness and downfall. As we bid farewell to this enigmatic figure, her legacy lives on, reminding us of the complexities of human nature. If you're intrigued, join us for more gripping stories, like, share, and subscribe.